hi guys it's me um you guys have been asking for an update my last one i was in pretty bad shape it was i want to say seven or eight weeks ish post-op and i was still in pain like every single day um the pain kind of comes and goes now so like some days are good some days are bad um i had the endoscopy and my doctor um when we did the barium test here my doctor said that they had to fix my surgery um like undo it or reverse the oagbp which is what happened in mexico my second surgery that i had um and a lot of you guys in the comments said i've never heard of that before that's because it's not allowed in the usa they don't do that surgery here um i didn't know that before getting that surgery OAGBP stands for one anastomosis gastric bypass. I might be pronouncing anastomosis incorrectly, but basically um, when you have a normal bypass, you have two sites that attach your intestines to, I'm going to do this wrong. I'm going to explain this wrong. My hair needs to get dyed. Look at it fading. Um, it, the anastomosis is the, is the site. So basically like I had this sleeve and then there's two sphincters. There's the sphincter at the end of your esophagus that goes into your stomach, and then this is a sphincter at the end of the stomach that goes into your intestine. And so what the um, one anastomosis gastric bypass, the OAGBP did, is in my sleeve, they created a hole before the second sphincter. So it doesn't go into the intestine there, it goes into the intestine. He bypassed six feet of intestine and attached it to this hole in my stomach and the food goes from my stomach right into my intestines there, but it bypasses the first six feet of my intestines, which um, means that I don't absorb like fat and oils and stuff because in that first six feet, that's where your, um, your liver puts the bile into your intestine to break down fats and stuff. So because um, of that, I'll never like poo again normal normally. Um, that was like one of the very first things I noticed aside from like the pain and stuff obviously and I called a friend of mine who had had a gastric bypass like a regular gastric bypass and she said no yeah you'll never you'll never poo again normal the same it's never gonna be the same again um and so that's kind of weird and it kind of scares me another friend of mine who has Crohn's was talking about how the fact that I can't absorb fats now um, can affect like vitamins that I take like I have to take vitamins every day because um, nutrient deficiencies that's why I got the sleeve in the first place is that you don't have these nutrient deficiencies um, as much as you do with like bypasses and stuff but now I do have to take like a slew of vitamins every day some of them are fat soluble so the fact that I don't absorb fat means that I can't really swallow um, those vitamins and expect them to do anything she was explaining to me that I should get my doctor to write a script for like injections for those vitamins that are fat soluble so that I do absorb them um I think now that I'm further out from the surgery um the pain isn't as bad the doctor when they did the barium test said that we have to do the surgery to convert your one anastomosis into a regular bypass and as soon as he did the endoscopy he said he looked at my stomach and it looks like a dog chewed it up. And he said, I will not operate on you unless I have to now. He's like, after looking at your stomach and seeing like just how badly it's mangled, um, it's not worth the risk to operate on you again. And that those were his words he used. He said, to be frank, it looks like a dog chewed up your stomach. And I was like, oh, great. Um, so basically like a lot of my pain was caused from irritation from that and from healing from that. And just the scar tissue and just healing from a pretty mangled beat up stomach um they have me sticking to soft foods um I'm trying to do that for the most part I have like I've been eating fish this morning I had um mock danish which is amazing um it's an egg and cream cheese and you like whip it up and I'll put the the pictures and recipe on my Instagram, which is Laura's Keto, L-A-U-R-A-S-K-E-T-O. Um, so that'll be on there. Other than that, I'm doing okay. Um, stats, my highest recorded weight before I stopped weighing myself was 207. 
My surgery weight for VSG was 194. I got down to 128. I went back up to 162-ish. Um, and then I had OAGBP, and now I'm 133.6 this morning, which is the lowest that I've been since the OAGBP. And um, I was hovering at like 135, 136 after I got out of the hospital for, for that surgery. I was in there for a couple weeks. After that surgery, if you guys didn't see my last couple of videos, I almost died from having it. Um, strong advocate, don't do it. <laughs> uh, my life is okay. Like, I'm doing okay right now, uh, mentally and physically, but um, I don't feel as much restriction as I did with my sleeve, which was, like, part of the reason for getting the surgery in the first place was I want to feel the restriction again, and I don't. Um, I think because it goes right into your intestine, it just kind of keeps the process going and you can eat more like so if that's one of the reasons for wanting to do an OAGBP at least I wouldn't recommend doing it my doctor thankfully um, is taking the stance of we're going to turn you into a real bariatric patient he advised me to go to Overeaters Anonymous hooked me up with those people um he is having me go see a nutritionist all the time. They're going to do my blood work all the time, you know, regular scheduled uh, appointments at the normal intervals for a bariatric patient, um, which I really appreciate. And I, I would really say, like, I know I, I did a snap judgment to go get VSG in Mexico. Um, really, like, I guess my stance on this now is if you're going to do this, like, go to counseling for six months first, go see a bariatric doctor here. Even if you tell that doctor, like, hey, I'm going to go to Mexico to do this, um, what would you do if I was a bariatric patient of yours? And what would the normal steps be? What's the nutrition like? What's the, psych you know, psychological part behind it? Um, that would be my advice to anyone who's considering doing it. Like, it really is so much more mental than than like just the physical part of it. I know um, the self-sabotage is huge with me. Like even like losing a pound, I notice like I'll lose a pound and then I'll go to the kitchen and I'll eat a whole bunch until it hurts. And I don't know why I do that to myself. And I feel like I'm not alone. I know that there's a lot of people who don't stick to a diet for whatever reason or self-sabotage for whatever reason. So I wouldn't make any quick judgments and just do this quickly. I would really talk to a counselor and try talking to a nutritionist and stuff first. I don't think anything that I've gone through is worth the pain that I've gone through and that I go through. Some days I feel normal now. Um, and then it's just kind of like it rears its ugly head and I'll wake up crying and I'll just be in pain again. So luckily those days are... are slowing down and they're further apart now and I think that's just because it's had more time for my stomach to heal but honest to god like the first seven weeks straight of being in pain like it fucks with your head like pardon my French um seven weeks straight of pain like I had suicidal thoughts like I didn't want to go through it and to get to that point mentally like nothing is worth it. I don't care how skinny you get. I don't care how much weight you lose. Like that's not, it's not worth seven weeks of pain. I would not do it. Um, so that's my advice. I'm rambling and this is super long, but you guys wanted an update. So I'm updating. Um, I will try to post more often. I know that it, um, a lot of you guys follow me and just kind of want to know how I'm doing and stuff. So I will try to post more often. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.